Okay, so here's the question. I'm going to find the absolute. Now, a synonym of absolute is global, so these two words are interchangeable. So we're asking to find the absolute maximum and minimum value of the function f of x equals 2x cubed plus 3x squared minus 12x plus 4 on the interval negative 4 to 2. Now we know that for some functions over some intervals, a maximum and minimum value may not exist. Now in this case, we know that the absolute maximum and minimum do exist because both conditions of the extreme valid theorem are satisfied. The function being a polynomial is continuous everywhere on the real line, and our interval is closed and bounded, right? It is a finite interval, so bounded from negative 4 to 2, and as negative 4 and 2 are containing the interval, our interval is closed. Well, okay, that's just guaranteeing the existence of the maximum and minimum value. How do we find them? Well, if you remember, a maximum and minimum can only occur at either an endpoint of the interval, which we already have, or at a critical point inside the interval. Well, critical points are points where the derivative is equal to zero or is undefined. So all we have to do now is find our first derivative. f being a polynomial, we simply use the power rule, so we'll get 6x squared plus 6x minus 12. Well, clearly, the derivative being once again a polynomial is always defined, so we have to look for values of x that make the derivative equal to 0. Well, we have a polynomial, we can find the zeros by factoring. So let's factor our quadratic. Every term is multiplied by 6, so we can factor 6, and we're left with x squared plus x minus 2. We have a quadratic, let's try and factor by inspection. And if we can't, of course, we'll fall back on the quadratic formula. So we need two real numbers whose product is negative 2 and whose sum is positive 1. Well, this is going to be plus 2 and minus 1. 2 times negative 1, negative 2, check. 2 plus minus 1 is 1, check. So we have factored our first derivative, and this will be 0 if and only if one of our two factors is equal to 0. So x plus 2 is 0 if x is negative 2, and x minus 1 is 0 if x equals 1. And now we're essentially done. We have to check the value of the function at the two endpoints, so negative 4 and 2, and at our two critical points only. As we've said before, the derivative will never be undefined, so we only get critical points from the derivative being 0. Well, which of these four values will give us the maximum value of f and the minimum value of f? The only way to find out is by inspection. So let's construct a table of values. So we have the x values and the values of the function, the y values, or if you prefer, f of x, same thing. So let's order a point from left to right, so we have negative 4 is the left hand point, then we have negative 2, our first critical point, then we keep going, we have positive 1, our second critical point, and finally we reach the right hand point of our interval. And now let's evaluate. So in f of x, if you replace x by negative 4, so plug in negative 4 in here, I'll leave I will leave the calculations up to you, you will find that f of negative 4 is negative 28. Same thing here now, replace x by negative 2 and you will find a value of positive 24. Replace x by 1 and f of 1 you will find is negative 3. 
and replace x by 2 finally, and you'll find that f of 2 is positive 8. And now the solution is apparent. Negative 28 is the smallest of the four values, so this is our absolute minimum, and 24 is the largest value, and therefore this is our absolute maximum. And so we can now write our conclusion. So our absolute max Now the absolute maximum is the value of x where the maximum value does occur. The maximum value is 24 and it occurs at x equals negative 2. So x equals negative 2 is what we call our absolute maximum. And of course the maximum value, the y value of the function that occurs at this x value is 24. Well, what about our absolute minimum? Well, the smallest y value is negative 28, which occurs as x equals negative 4, and so x equals negative 4 is called the absolute minimum, and of course the minimum value is the corresponding y value, which is negative 28. And we're done. And you see what was so great about this method is we did not have to sketch the graph of our function over the interval. All we have to do is evaluate the function at the two endpoints of the interval and at every critical point inside the interval, whichever value of x yields the larger y value will be your absolute maximum, and whichever value of x will yield the smaller y value will give us our absolute minimum. And that's it.